extends all the Yosef, way come on, honey, let's get a move on. You're running late again. I have something I want to talk to you about, and your eggs and toast are getting cold. Oh, and you know, Marcy, who lives down the street, the red hat, well, sometimes she's red. Anyway, she's pulling out of her driveway, and you know, that evil old lady, the horrible one with that the terrible dog. She's, she's there. She, Marcy nearly backed it up into her. The dog has a terrible fit. I mean, he goes ballistic. The woman reaches into her purse, and then she pulls out this. I can't even. I'm late. Good morning. I need you to stop by the store on the way after school, OK? You can't. You're book me. I'm sorry. I need sumac and nutmeg. I'm making masaka. Can't dad bring you home? Mm -hmm. Your mother asked you to do something, you do it. Gotta go. He's spoiled. Like all American kids. They should learn respect. My problem is, I'm too nice. That is not a problem. Yeah, it's a big problem. If she likes me too much to go to bed with me, what does that even mean? It means you're playing out of luck, pal. We're working here. But she likes me. Oh, boy. Tell him. Tell him what? That she finds him amusing but repulsive. Tell him. <sighs> well, it's just that she sees you as more than a superficial, shallow jerk. You should be flattered. Lex, I need those departure tax stamps, please. They're on CD ROM. Hey. Hi. I have an idea for our second date. Well, we never quite finished the first one. Hmm. Mm -hmm. You ever bone fished? Yeah, but not on a second date. And Ross Island, the Bahamas. Great fishing. Fun weekend. What do you say? Maybe. But if we do go two rooms. I like you too much. Stephanie Weinman, 28, gunshot wounds to the chest and neck. Michael Merson, 35, gunshot wound to the head. Total of four DOAs and one female GSW. Where's the wounded victim? Mount Sinai Hospital in Falls Church. Maybe the closest she ever gets to Israel. This is terrible. Yes, it is. Pigeon Paul, you better see this. Millimeter Beretta semi automatic. Very obliging, leaving the murder weapon behind. He didn't want to get caught walking around with it? Or maybe he was sending us a message. What does that message say? I don't know yet. Well, we're not the police. Is this for us? Only if it's an act of terrorism. What did the uh, 
wounded woman say? Not much. Man came in yelling about America and Israel. Started shooting. She said he could have been an Arab. That's when I called you. I'm glad you did. Excuse me. Pull here. Thank you, I'm on my way. That was the hospital. The witness is ready for another interview. Mr. Hazley, would you continue to accompany Miss Pohl and take notes? My husband was seated at the desk, and I looked at some brochures. The Sea of Galilee. And then a man came in, and he shouted, Israel something, and America. What did the man look like? I'm not sure. What about Israel and America? Well, he, he had an accent. Maybe it was a foreign language, I don't know. And there was an explosion, and and I saw my husband. He, he just tipped over. There was blood on his shirt. And then I just felt like somebody hit me with a club. If you can think about what the man looked like, you said before you had the impression that he might have been... Yeah, dark hair and dark skin. Um, I, I didn't really get a very good look at him. We're good enough to think that he might be an Arab. What was he wearing? Maybe, uh, I don't know, I don't know. Something wrong. I was trying to get a description of a murderer from a fragile witness. You jumped in with a question about your politics. It goes to motivation. Which will be fascinating for the CIA's post-game analysis. But right now, I've got to find this guy before he kills someone else. I'm sorry if I interrupted you. Well, maybe we could arrange a system of hand signals. Are you mocking me? No, ma'am. Avery. Good. Great, thanks. We got a hit on the weapon. His name is Jamar Akil. He bought the gun at a store in Richmond last October. His fingerprints are on the weapon, and he matches the description given by the surviving witness. Who is Mr. Akil? Palestinian. Born 1962, immigrated to the United States 1984, married Emily Harcourt the following year, has one son, Yosef, 16, owns an ethnic grocery store in Falls Church. Any known terrorist connections? Not in our database, no police record. It's the first time he's come under the attention of law enforcement. So we have no idea what his motive was. He's a Palestinian. He runs into a travel agency specializing in tours to Israel, shouting about Israel, and without provocation, guns down five Jews. Two Jews, two evangelical Christians, and one Lutheran. Can I tell the president you're treating this as an act of terrorism? Define terrorism. If the White House has to define terrorism for the director of central intelligence, we're in trouble. And if the CIA squanders its resources on isolated incidents perpetrated by violent cranks who happen to be Arab, we'll be in worse trouble. He left this morning at 9. I don't know where he is. If you do and you're not telling me, you're making yourself an accessory to murder. I don't believe my husband killed anyone. You recognize this gun? No. No, I don't. 
He bought a gun last fall. After 9-11, somebody threw a rock through our store window. People were leaving vile messages on our answering machine. He was worried. He bought this gun. It has to be a mistake. Mrs. Akil, how did your husband feel about Israel? How do you think? I don't know. He's Palestinian. His mother and sister still live in a refugee camp in the Gaza Strip. You're not Palestinian? No. No, I'm not. But after 17 years of being married to one, I think I understand their point of view. Do you understand shooting up a business link to Israel? Jamie is an American citizen. He loves this country. Where they leave vile messages on his answering machine. He wouldn't do something like this. He loves our life. He loves me. They're like the Arab American Romeo and Juliet. Her family disapproved and his family disapproved. I think that she was more upset that he left without saying goodbye than that he shot five people along the way. Okay, Jamar Akil's credit card records. He shops at the Gap. Gasoline, gasoline, gasoline. Three tickets to Harry Potter. Airline tickets for one. One trip last year, two trips the year before that, and the year before. Where did he go? Israel. Always a pleasure to be invited back to cooperate with the CIA, see your nice office and uh, a very clean desk. You keep the secrets in your head. Does Israeli intelligence leave papers lying around for people to see? Some papers for some visitors. Sorry about the mess. Jamar kills travels to Israel. Through Israel. He lands, he gets processed, then he takes a bus to the Gaza Strip. Kambatal refugee camp. A major Hamas recruitment center. Happy home of bombers and assassins. It's also the birthplace of Mr. Akil. His mother still lives there with his sister and her child. Now, you tell me why the interest. That travel agency shooting in Falls Church. His name wasn't mentioned in the news. The FBI hasn't released it yet. Then Mr. Akil is a terrorist. That's what we're trying to determine. Well, to determine, an Arab attacks a target like that? It could be an isolated hate crime. Isolated? Yes, of course. Such a thing never happened before. Do you have anything in your records linking Mr. Akil to Hamas or any other terrorist organization? Now I do. It's a simple question. Do you need me here this weekend or not? Why? All right. I have a date. I always need you. My life is not complete without you. Great. Then I'll take that as a no. This place is open 24 hours. I'm not on the duty roster. I've worked seven out of the past nine weekends. And done an excellent job. Thank you. So, what does Dad say? He doesn't I need, need me. I need her. You know, there's an 8 o'clock flight tomorrow night. We could be on Andros by 11. Andros? Have you tried the bone fishing? Excuse me. I understand you two are planning a trip. I'd like to propose a change of itinerary. I think he wants us to get out of the car, honey.
Are you Americans? Uh, we're Canadians. Mr. and Mrs. Stewart? Yes. Where are we going? We're going to the refugee camp, Khan Batal. For what purpose? Uh, to provide humanitarian aid. Uh, here's a letter from the UN Relief and Work Agency, and then another from the Palestinian authorities in Nautilus. What kind of humanitarian aid do you provide at Khan Batal? We're food distribution specialists. Is this the food you distribute? No, that's our personal supply. You can keep it if you want. You're bribing me with beef stew? <laughs> I don't think that rises to the level of a bribe, sir. You will see the camp in five kilometers. Stay on the road. None mines. Thank you. Shakra. Hello. Well, here we go. Guess bone fishing's out of the question. Here's our welcoming committee. Unemployment here is 50%. I guess this could be the highlight of their day. More neighbor interviews. I'm looking at these, and Akil and his wife were Ozzy and Harriet until a few months ago. Until Ozzy gets called a dirty Arab and then buys a gun. He volunteered as a high school tutor. He gave blood the day after 9-11. What, what are his wife and son doing? Staying home. We tap the phone in case Akil calls. Quick warrant. Gotta love that Patriot Act. This guy didn't look like a terrorist. His bank records show regular contributions to the Red Cross. And an $8,000 cash withdrawal last May. And another 10,000 last December. Christmas shopping? Each withdrawal made a day or two before he flew to Gaza. Taking money home to mom. Taking money home to someone. Uh, the camp administrator sends his apologies. I'm sure he'll want to greet you tomorrow. My name is Mustafa. This is where your predecessor lived. Of course, uh, he was a single man. So I see. Uh, uh, how is his mother in um, Alberta? Recovering. Uh, our prayers are with her. Your relief organization. Is it Quaker? No, Mennonite. Ah, lovely people, the Mennonites. They've done a lot of good work here. We try to give something back. There's a shower through there. And if you need anything, ask me. Or send to Canada. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Sleep. I'm easy. I'm not. Hello. Hi, Dad. It's uh, it's Robin. We got here safely. Robin, always a pleasure. How's Mom? Peachy. Listen, Mr. Hazley found indications that Jamara Keel may have been carrying cash on a regular basis to that camp. He may have been raising money in the U.S. for Hamas. Well, I think we've seen some of the boys around. Akil may be with them by now. I want you to find him and determine who he works with. Then bring him home. His wife misses him. Where'd you get these? Akil's house, FBI got a search warrant. There. That's his mother, and that must be his sister. Feed them to the beast. Ready? Almost. How's the scenic Gaza Strip? Full of beans. How's that? 
lower and to your left. That's good. No. No. Maybe Akil's women folk aren't hungry. Okay, keep checking. No. No. <sighs> no. Yes. Yes. Yes, that's Akil's mother in the headscarf. Which headscarf? Uh, the blue and white Paisley. The one about to walk away. Wait. The bag's leaking. Thank you. We've got some action. She's leaving the house and heading west. Mm. You didn't hide the transponder in a bean, did you? I wouldn't want her to eat it. I put it in the wrapper. Huh. She's about a quarter mile southwest of you. There's a little street going off a square. She stopped moving. Go out with your transponder. I'll guide you there. OK, you're there. It's on your right. That's it. Ready to go thermal. Fire up the sunglasses. Give me a change, honey. Okay, likes. I'm looking at the house. Get in. I see the women and a baby. Nobody else. The kill isn't there. Mr. and Mrs. Stewart? Are you uh, sightseeing? Oh, we're just out taking a walk. We still haven't gotten over the flight yet. <laughs> a walk? Well, uh, this part of the camp is called Haifa, named by the refugees who fled from Haifa in 1948. That was a long time ago. For them, it was yesterday. They are just waiting for the Israelis to go away so they can have their houses back. Many of them have old, rusty keys. They'll be happy to show you. Wow. Where do they think the Israelis are going to go? Exactly. Well, come by the office later. The administrator was asking about you. Okay. Nice guy. So what about Akil's mother? Knock on the door. Tell her Akil's wife's looking for her. See which way she jumps. Heads up, guys. She's coming out. Wait. Carrying a package. Wonder what's in it. Dinner? Maybe someone ordered takeout. Think you can get a bug in there? Just point me to the sewer. How'd they do it? Used a plumber snake to get a wire into the building through a pipe. You don't want to know which pipe. Do we know which one is Akil? No. He's there. They're talking about him. What are they saying? Nice job killing those Americans? Something about a judgment, a penalty, justice. Justice? Shooting five innocent people at travel agency? They're not talking about what he did. It's what they're going to do. To him. They're going to execute him tomorrow. Why? We don't know. Do we care? In the sense that the poor fellow is about to suffer an early death? No. 
that something is going on that we don't understand? Yes. What do you want us to do? We might be able to help. Mama! Let it kill me! Let it in ball! What do you know about my son? That he's in trouble. If we can do something, we will. You can help me bury him in 12 hours. We can't be seen with them. Shh, They're liars. Shh, shh, Mom, please, Rajan, Rajan, shh, shh, we're not gonna hurt you. Where's that baby's father? He's dead. Why is your son in trouble? Mama. 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 Bess, <laughs> Why is your son in trouble? Because he spied on them. For the CIA. They said a kill worked for us. Spied for the CIA. That's a direct quote. So he told his family a story. Well, he also gave them money. The money we thought he was sending to Hamas. He told them it came from us. But he didn't work for us. Are you sure about that? Well, I think someone would have mentioned it. Why don't you ask again? <laughs> he never should have come here. I told him not to. He was in America. He was safe. Walahina. Mumu himi. Basma freti. Mina kati flusu. Li ibni. Bidala. Bidala. Mrs. Akil. Did your son tell you who he spied on for the CIA? This place. There are certain groups here. Hamas? Did he tell you why he came back here now? To help us. Help you how? They suspected him. Hamas suspected him. They made threats against us. Leila, me, even the baby. You know what they do to the families of informers. Shamar was afraid for us. He said he had done something to make Hamas see that he was one of them, so they would leave us alone. Did he tell you what he had done? Was something in America. Then he went to see Hamas. They didn't believe him. Or it wasn't enough. I don't know. Why didn't you find this before? I had no reason to look before. We've been looking for this guy on three continents. All you had to do was cover your own organization. We don't usually find fugitive mass murderers by looking around the office. I guess most of the murderers here aren't fugitives. Avery Jackson, you have something for us? I searched through the records of the Office of Security. Jamar Akil showed up at our front gate eight days ago. So he did work for you? No, but he said that he did. He told the guard that he wanted to see his control officer, whom he only knew by the first name, David. He said it was a matter of life and death. The guard made a call, but Akil is not on our agent list. He became very agitated when the guard turned him away. Why didn't you find this before? Our front gate is like a... Lunatic Grand Central Station. Akil showed up right before a man who claimed that the CIA had put impotence lotion in his condoms, and right after a man who came to warn us that the president's wife is a North Korean spy. You might want to tell the president. 
So Akio wasn't working for us, but he told the guard he was. He told his family he was. He had money that can't otherwise be accounted for. Hamas believed he was spying for us. And he apparently murdered four people in an attempt to prove he wasn't spying for us. Which would explain why he left his gun at the scene of the crime. He wanted to be identified, but unfortunately for him, the Bureau chose not to release his name to the press. We can release it now if we want to try to convince Hamas not to kill him. He's a multiple murderer. They'd be saving us the cost of an execution. Well, if we put out his name now, Hamas would probably think it was a trick anyway, trying to convince them that he wasn't our spy when he was. I'm not sure I understood what you just said. Does anybody have any idea what this is all about? I believe I might. How do I know this is salt? Excuse me? It says S, but it could be pepper. Or garlic. It could be oregano. This is why you invited me? Jamar Akil worked for you. You recruited him to spy for Israel, but you told him he was spying for the CIA. Have you heard, Carl? The Palestinians don't like Israel. But Akil liked the United States, and he needed money. So you recruited him under a false flag. And what if that were true? What happened? His information got low grade, so you cut him off? I was his case officer on vacation in the lot last week. When he got worried about his mother and his sister, how come he couldn't find you? He came running here, probably to ask for help getting his family out of Gaza, but we don't know for sure because a guard kicked him out. So Akil was mad. And he came up with the brilliant idea of saving his family by shooting five Americans. It was their screw up and our problem. Akil wasn't working for us. He thought he was. He risked his life and the lives of his family for us. He's about to be executed for spying. He shot five innocent people, sir. I don't think we owe him anything. No. But the Israelis owe us something. And I intend to collect. Sure. There's only a few hundred armed militia in the camp. And I have Terry. You have Terry what? I'll call you back, sir. He wants to save Akil and his family, snatch him away from Hamas, take him home for debriefing and to stand trial. If we can. If we can. If we can. Well, no, there's only a few hundred armed militia. <laughs> I have you. Why do you care about this man? Why don't you? He worked for you, gave you information. Don't you feel any responsibility? When a man goes out to murder Jews, we generally feel a lot less sympathy for him. I'm surprised that you don't feel the same, considering the murders took place I here. don't want him back to give him a medal. I want him to answer for his crimes under our laws. If there's going to be an execution, I want us to do it, not the nearest gang of angry thugs. Isn't that a rather fine distinction? No. Hamas believes he's working for the CIA. It's bad policy to let the bad guys kill people they think are our sources. Makes it a little hard to recruit. He's a prisoner in a Hamas house in a refugee camp in the Gaza Strip. So it's not going to be easy. But you're going to pick up that phone and call your people and tell them they're going to help. Leahi.
Go get him. Second door on the right. Take him out the back. Here's the key. It's okay. I'm with Mossad. Okay, just remember, we're the ones who rescued you. They're the ones who are trying to kill you, okay? On your knees. <laughs> CIA. Now you help me. How's it look out there? Still a few people running around. Well, when it's empty, get the car and bring it around. Where are you taking me? Home. No, not, not my mother and my sister. They will kill them. I won't go. I don't remember anyone giving you a vote. You promised me you'd protect them when I started working for you. You never worked for us. I informed you about Hamas. You gave me money, made me sign receipts. That wasn't us. You were working for Israel. That's why when I went to the CIA, did you see my wife? My son? No, but you ruined their lives too. I wrote a letter to her. I thought I'd ask them to send it. Clear. Get the car. No. Please, I, I beg you. My mother, my sister, the baby! You just need him, right? Maybe. Maybe I want everybody. I want to think about it. No, 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 please, please, take me! Take me! Please, please, take me! We're moving to the car now. Hey, hey, put him down! Hey! hey! Put your weapons down! Yes! Get them in the car now. Come on, come on. letter to his wife. To do 
do what I did, I had to kill my heart first. Not for the sorrow I caused anyone else, but for the sorrow I caused you. The only reason I don't mind dying is I know that even alive, I can never be with you again. How romantic. For his tribe. For a thousand year old argument. <laughs> Where did you get this? The Gaza Strip. It was recovered after his death. How's your son doing? He's at school. I'm trying to convince him that we have to go on with our lives. That we did nothing wrong. I think that's going to work out. You never know who's going to get along. <laughs> <laughs> 